um, want you to know that we're here for you. Uh, next slide. Go ahead. So we're, we're gonna talk about the support systems in here, who is here to support you. There you go. So then uh, this is, uh, I just want you to know, and it's gonna live, uh, we're recording this too, so you'll have access to it. But this is, uh, the uh, aside from our teachers, this is what we call our support staff, our resource team. And, um, and they're all friendly faces and they're all amazing people. You have uh, me as your principal and it's a privilege to, this is my third year here at Julian Nava as principal. And I have Ms. Casagran, uh, my assistant principal who opened the meeting for us. We have Mr. Soto, our assistant principal, Ms. Wilson, our assistant principal as well, and our amazing uh, coordinator, Ms. Vega, Mr. Morales, or Ms. Morales, our middle school, college, and career coach, Mr. Juarez, our librarian who's facilitating this. Um, he's doing all the behind the scenes, Zoom, platform, PowerPoint stuff just to make this meeting happen. So we want to thank him. And then we have two very important people and as you're watching if you have something to write with make sure that you can write this we have our two academic counselors if this is your first experience in middle school uh, middle schools and high schools we have counselors who are kind of your first stop with any question you may have regarding your students progress so miss fuentes she's our academic counselor for all the students who have a last name from a through l so if any student with Alvarez through Lopez is assigned to Ms. Fuentes, and um, that's who you would reach out to and ask questions regarding student progress, regarding any need that, you're, that you may have in terms of uh, your child's education. Ms. Lemos is our other counselor, and she has all our students with last names that start with M, as in Martinez, all the way to Z, as in um, uh, Zuniga. And uh, so that would be uh, all, everybody here you've seen is a resource, but that would be your first stop in terms of um, if you ever had a question regarding student progress. And then we have Ms. Guzman, who's our math coach. She works with our teachers to help them improve their practice. We have Ms. Vergara, our language arts coach, who work, same thing, we all work with teachers, make sure that they're uh, being reflective and, and um, and we're working together to move the school forward. And then a very important person, she's our office manager, she's a school administrative assistant, Ms. Soyla Vargas. So she, she uh, it's, uh, I always say it's her office and she's the one who uh, manages that and she's um, a very, very, very important part of our school community. And so she is here as a valuable resource. She's also a member of the school community and so, um, She's a great resource to, to all of us and to all of you. And then we have Ms. Uh, Maria Quintero. She's our office technician. So she's here uh, every day too, answering phone calls um, and just uh, serving the community, serving the parents. And then we have our parent community rep, which is Ms. Gonzalez. And she is anything that has to do with parent involvement, parent engagement, parent training. She plays a key role in that. And, uh, and so you can also reach out to her and uh, as we get along, as we go move along in the presentation, we're going to give you all the information so that you have emails, phone numbers, no hours, and how to contact anybody here on this resource staff I included. So parent communication, again, uh, because of the situation we're in, it's very important that we have effective lines of communication, that at any given point, you as a parent are able to access uh, uh, correct information or any information that's going to be able to uh, that allow you to uh, support your students better right so we're going to use all the following platforms we're going to use phone calls right now you can call the office between eight and four that'll show up in the presentation later with the phone number uh, messages via email mm -hmm. if you uh, if you don't have an email established, I'm going to encourage you to establish it now because you are going to need the, the one of the platforms in middle school, the platform in middle school that everything gets done in is Schoology and, and the parent portal. And for you to be able to uh, access all that, you'll need a uh, email. So if you don't have one, that's something you might wanna uh, take care of like ASAP. And that's, uh, you can get a Gmail and those are free. 
Again, if you anybody needs any help with that, just give us a call and somebody will walk you through that. Uh, there'll be teacher conferences this year more than ever uh, at our school, our parent, uh, our, our home to school, school to home communications has, all, has always been a priority for us. The fact that we're opening a school year in a remote setting makes that, that is amplified. So we are going to have, um, uh, there's gonna be a lot of work with teachers reaching out to parents and communicating and establishing a relational culture. And you'll see us uh, doing, the same, uh, doing the same thing with the community. One thing that we did in the spring more than any other school, and that'll continue, we're just setting up dates and times. Uh, for example, I had a standing meeting every Friday at one o'clock in Spanish, two o'clock in English for our, our parents and community. And sometimes we'd have uh, 50 parents show up, sometimes we'd have 15 parents show up. But it was a standing meeting that our community knew that on that Friday they could, um, they could enter a meeting like this on Zoom and they could ask their questions. Uh, so we provide trainings. It was just another resource. We use Blackboard Connect, which is also the, um, when you get the automated phone calls. So if you're not getting those, please call us. We'll, sh we'll show you uh, another form that you have accessible to you. <clears throat> because if you're not getting those messages, there's something uh, that we need to set up in your account. Or maybe you've updated a phone number. Uh, one of those two things, we want to make sure you're getting those messages. Those messages go out by, by phone. They also go by text. And then we have our, our JNLA website, which is always updated. It is uh, uh, managed by our amazing, uh, one of our amazing sixth grade teachers, Miss Whitney, and she's always on there adding new content to that. That serves as a resource for you. And then we have Schoology. And so we want to make sure that you are proactive, that you're reaching out. Anytime you have a question, if you can't find it in any one of those resources, you can always, again, uh, reach out to the school. We're on, we're on uh, um, Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we have a website. We're gonna give you a Google form that you can always click on and send information. A to four, you can call the school. Again, for me, being accessible to you is a priority. And so, um, so there's really sh should be no reason why you don't get your answers question or, um, I'm sorry, questions answered. Uh, if, uh, if, if the, you need a device and we'll get into that too, if your internet's not working, if the device you have is not connecting, we wanna be able to support you with that. Uh, communicating with teachers, that's going to be key. Our teachers are going, are going to initiate a lot of that communication. They're going to be reaching out to you the first couple of weeks to just make those, uh, make those connections with you. Uh, we are going, we're not going to, normally back to school night is like early October, late September. We're going to have that uh, soon after the first two weeks, and that'll look different too. But I want you to look at this form here. This is every teacher, every staff member's um, name, what they teach, and their emails, and their uh, office hours. The office hours might change, uh, but for the most part, this is what we had. And so when you get your child's schedule, you can, uh, you'll see who the teachers are, and you, you'll be able to see their emails. So you'll always have access to, to your teacher's emails, and uh, so that you can ask them questions. Your, your children will have access to Schoology, to ask teachers questions, so communication will be there. We want to make sure that that is a strong bond and a really a strong line of communication. We have our website. This form lives on our website. It is www.drjulianavalearningacademy.com. And uh, like I said, there's, it's a, there's tons of resources there. There's videos there. There's tutorials for families, for parents who don't know how to log on to the parent portal. Uh, um, I, again, I can't say that enough for me. A big priority is just making sure that our parents have access to everything they need. Again, just uh, we're on Facebook. If you have uh, social media, I, I, I encourage you to, um, as soon as this meeting is over, to go on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, whichever one you feel comfortable in, and follow us. Uh, we use that a lot to, we, we had to use that a lot this spring to get a lot of information out. And so we also have a TikTok and we started a YouTube channel that we're going to start loading content there too. So 
Uh, again, we wanna make sure that communication is established, it's effective, and it's always at your fingertips. The student learning platforms. Um, so there's three, uh, the two of the first two, Zoom. So we're all doing Zoom right now. We all have to learn how to do Zoom, right? That's the, that's the big thing this spring, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And so um, teachers this year are going to be doing uh, live instruction via Zoom. The way kids are gonna access the live instruction is kids are going to, uh, and this is a middle school and high school thing, in uh, this school year too in elementary, kids are gonna have to learn Schoology, but Schoology is the base platform. Kids are going to have to log on to Schoology. Once they log in, log in with their, their username and password, they'll have uh, their, all their classes, all the class information on Schoology, and through there, they'll be able to access either Google Classroom or the link for the Zoom for each one of their classes. Uh, which is in comparison here, we provided everybody the password and the link, but it's public. And so um, for students, we want them logging into Schoology because that makes it uh, inside the L LAUSD firewall and it's not public because we don't want uh, any stranger who just happens to get a password show up to a class either, right? So we will be training parents we will be training our students on how to use Schoology so that through Schoology they can access Zoom. And then the, the Google Classroom, that's where teachers, some teachers use it, and that's where they, they have all their instructions and their, their lessons and videos and, and uh, uh, lesson plans for instruction. This is just an example of what a Schoology pay, a page looks like for, uh, for our students. Once they log in, Schoology is a Los Angeles Unified School District platform. It's our learning management system, so it is secure. They log in, and then any, all their courses will be on, like, on a dashboard like this. So if we look, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, there's the class for Ms. Cadena. All of Ms. Cadena's students will click on that, and then that's where uh, the instruction, um, instructional page would be with all the links, all the information for the day's instruction, for the week's instruction, will all be there. So this is going to be, it was our base platform this spring, and it's gonna to continue to be the base platform because this is the district's learning management system. And the only way, again, there will, there will be live instruction through Zoom, but the only way kids are gonna, going to access it is going through Schoology first. And, um, Students will automatically be enrolled. They don't have to do anything, but they, they, they must check. They all have a district email. That's gonna be part of our work, part of our teacher's work to make sure that our kids are, um, have that information so that uh, on day one, they're ready to go. Uh, just student expectations. So some of the expectations, uh, in regards to attendance, the expectation is still going to be the same with an understanding that there might be some fluctuations and some unique situations, right? So the district goal is that our students have no more than seven absences in a school year. That, uh, that equals, uh, equates to 96% or higher attendance rate. And so that's still going to be the goal during re remote learning. What we don't know, we know we're gonna take attendance. What we don't know is how that attendance uh, process is going to be. Now, I also understand and, uh, and do expect that there's going to be certain uh, uh, urgent situations that might arise. We might, because of the COVID-19, we might be in a situation where um, family, I hope not, but that family members may, are, are sick or we have to make uh, some adjustments or maybe the, the power goes out in the neighborhood and then nobody can access. If the power goes out, so does the internet. All we need, and there's gonna be flexibility with that, we understand that. So we, the only thing is um, making sure we have those line of communication set so that in the event of a, 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 a situation happening that affects participation and instruction, we can be there to support you. Uh, same thing with Zoom participation. Uh, if you can see, I'm wearing uh, headphones here so that I can, uh, I can hear uh, the presentation. And then I can also, if there's any noise in the classroom or the traffic outside on Adams, 
uh, it's blocked out because I'm wearing uh, headphones. One of the main things is going to be, and this is going to be a, a family responsibility, once we have the schedules of what the day is going to look like, and we should have that as a district uh, here in the next couple of days. Today, uh, probably around this time, the, the school board is voting to approve a schedule. And then uh, the next couple of days, the teachers doing and the teachers are going to vote to approve that same schedule. Once those approvals happen, then we're going to share that uh, with everybody so that everybody knows what the schedule is on a daily basis. And then, um, and then as a family, we're going to have to support our children to make sure that when they're, when they're doing their instruction, that they have uh, a space that's quiet as possible, that, um, and if it can't be quiet, we're, we're, and we're going to talk about a distribution we're going to do, but the school's also going to provide every one of our students with free, uh, free uh, headphones so they can use them at home. But if you, uh, this, uh, this form here is going to be sent home too. But uh, number one, we want to make sure we're on time for our Zoom classes. Because remember, when you log in, the teacher has to physically let you in. And we want instruction to happen. Number two is find a quiet place. So that's going to be, again, a family support. If we know that Rafael is going to be um, in his classes through Zoom, Zoom all day long from nine to two, then may and, and then maybe we're not going to watch TV loud during that time. So um, we got to support that. Number three, have your materials ready. We are going to provide you, and we'll get into that in a bit with uh, a backpack. Every one of our kids with a backpack of instructional materials so that they can be successful at home. Um, you know, there's different ways of managing the uh, the Zoom participating, the participation. The teachers will share that with our with our our students. But more than more than anything, as a family, we have to know once we know the schedule that that's the time that the students are going to need to be uninterrupted. We're going to have to minimize the noise around them, uh, knowing that their learning is going to take place in in your homes, in your living rooms, in your kitchens, in your in your bedrooms. So we're going to have to provide that quiet space as much as possible um, for our students. And, and, you know, I understand it's going to be a challenge. I have two daughters, a 15 and 13 year old, and to, to manage them too is, is a challenge. So we're there with you and we want to make sure that we are uh, not only supporting our students, but supporting you. The learning schedule. So again, I, I mentioned we don't have the exact minute by minute, uh, hour by hour schedule, but, uh, but we do know that our incoming sixth graders always have, we have three teachers. So in elementary, they had one teacher. They come to sixth grade as a way to transition into middle school. They'll have three teachers. They'll have a teacher who teaches them math and science, a teacher who teaches them language arts and social studies, and then they'll have a PE teacher. And so those are the three teachers your children are going to have this school year. So that means three parent con three different parent conferences on the uh, during parent conferences. That means three different classes that you'll have to monitor on the parent portal. Uh, you'll have to establish communication with three different teachers. You might get phone calls from three different teachers. So uh, it's just a reminder. Our seventh and eighth grade teachers uh, kids have. Um, they have a regular uh, traditional middle school schedule where they have uh, seven, seven classes. Uh, if you look on the screen, there's a sample parent portal. When you, uh, and, we're gonna, and we're going to provide training and access, this is very important. If you do not have, uh, haven't logged on or have never visited the parent portal, this is a valuable tool for all of our parents. But you also need an email to be able to log, to log in but everything our teachers do is all shows up in your parent portals. You can see the assignments, you can see the grading, you can see comments, you see uh, that's a way you can also communicate with teachers. So, so on our behalf, we're going to be providing trainings for our parents to make sure that you all can get logged on to the parent portal too. So a big, a big thing here, because we're uh, doing remote learning, is making sure that you all have the devices, right? So some of you, uh, uh, 
you're all coming from elementaries. Some of you might have already turned in your devices to the to the elementary school. Um, Mr. Soto, my assistant principal, and I'm gonna turn it over to him in a bit. He's, a, he's going to be in charge of making sure that every single one of our kids, every single one of our families is connected, has a device, and also if they need, uh, if you need a, a hotspot, the, a hotspot is a device that provides you the internet, right? And then, um, so uh, this past spring, I'm very proud that we had a 99% connectivity rate. That means 99% of our kids were connecting and accessing instruction. Uh, uh, our goal is to get to 100%. And then, um, so as part of a distribution, and you'll see dates in a little bit, we're, we're also going to those families that need devices, even if you didn't need it in the spring, Maybe in the spring you had your own laptop and you felt that was good, but now you want your laptop back, your laptop back, and you don't you want uh, your kid uh, to use one of ours. We have new devices that we can pass out to you. We'll take care of you. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Soto so he can say more about uh, supporting you for uh, connectivity. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, thank you, Mr. Alvarez, and uh, good afternoon, <clears throat> students and and, and parents. Uh, again, my name is Mr. Soto, and I'm one of the assistant principals here at, at, at uh, JNLA. And we are here to, uh, to assist and, and guide and provide some, some, uh, some te technology for your students, for your sons and daughters. Um, this is very, very important, uh, the, the two bit.ly uh, surveys that you see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, the first one is the, is the blue one, right? The technology survey. This one is, is probably, probably of the utmost urgency, just because <clears throat> we would like to get every student connected as soon as possible so that when August 18th comes around, we're ready, we're hitting the ground running and, and, and the learning begins, right? We're connected with our teachers, with, with, our, uh, with our fellow classmates and, and any other support that we might need. <clears throat> uh, but again, that is the blue survey. Please write that down now, uh, keep that. Again, this, this, this is all recorded. It'll be posted on, on our website and social media. But if you need it, it'll be there, but please write it down and take that as soon as possible so we know uh, what your child needs, okay? Uh, the yellow one, the yellow one is our is ongoing support. So that yellow bit.ly um, um, Google form is for anything that you're gonna need throughout the semester, throughout the year, uh, anything comes up uh, in regards to technology, enrollment, uh, the parent portal, Schoology, um, any, any platforms that we're using and, and the textbooks, okay? so. Um, you, you'll always have a vehicle of communication with the school. And again, that's, that's a big thing here at, at JNLA where you'll be able to click, click, and, and get a hold of somebody. So the blue one, please do that as soon as possible. The yellow one, please know you have that available for, for any ongoing support. Um, our matriculating incoming sixth graders, uh, if you receive devices from your elementary school, if they've reached, reached out to you, go ahead and return them to, that, to those schools. If they've reached out to you, go for it, return them, please. If they haven't reached out to you, don't worry about it. When you come to JNLA for your distribution, you can return your device and we'll give you a, new, a different one. You, you'll get one that belongs to JNLA and you'll have that available to you. So if you've, again, if you've gotten any notice from your elementary school, go ahead and please return those. Um, I wanna say if, uh, I know Mr. Alvarez already covered it, but we are going to be giving out iPads and then the hotspots. Hotspots are very important because if we need that Wi-Fi at home, uh, the connectivity, uh, please, please, again, use that technology survey so we know if you need a, a, a hotspot and, and Wi-Fi at home. But, um, uh, you know, uh, thank you for coming tonight and, or this, this afternoon, and, and we look forward to working with everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Soto. If you can... Uh, microphone can we go back a slide okay uh, again I uh, just want to point out those two those two uh, surveys there the the bitly this uh, the blue one that's the one we really want you to uh, you can do it now it's in the chat they put it in the chat so you can click on it um, but do that as soon as possible if you have any if you know any friends that are coming to our school uh, that just are not participating. Sometimes we have we we have uh, representative parents. Oh, you participate and give me the information. For one thing, um, we have the devices. 
we uh, brand new. We we're ready to pass them out. But the 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 hot spots we don't have. We order them for you. So that uh, we want to make sure that everybody who needs a hot spot needs internet can let us know right away. So right away we can order that from the district so that you get you get it as soon as possible. The devices are here. They're sitting in our uh, here in our offices, and we're ready to pass them out. You'll get that right away during the distributions, or here you can. Uh, uh, and if you can't make the distributions, we'll give you the dates right now. But the hotspots are the ones that we have to actually order from the district, and so that adds uh, a couple days to that process. So I just want to make sure that you um, you're able to do that blue survey. The yellow survey is there for you 24/7. Again, we want to make sure that you are have access to the school. We have people that are going to be monitoring those uh, those uh, those questions. Anything you need, um, any question, any clarity you need, anything that involves uh, supporting your your child, our students, please you can use that form. Um, especially if it's after hours, we will have people in the in the office from eight to four thirty every day, uh, answering phones. Uh, but you know, sometimes things occur when we're talking to our our children at seven eight thirty, and nobody's going to be here to answer the phone. But you have that survey there that where you can click on it and you can ask a question. And then you also have teacher emails and staff emails too. So we want to be available to you. Um, it's important that right now during this this pandemic that we're available, that schools are available to their communities as much as possible. So. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Soto. Now, if you can go to the next slide. Parent opportunities for involvement. So uh, one of the things that uh, we're all very proud here at JNLA is that we do, I know we do, more than uh, Clinton, more than Adams, more than LA Academy in terms of our parents and engaging our parents and making sure that this school is your school. So we're going to go over a few opportunities for you to be involved. At our at our school, um, Miss, I mentioned earlier today that Miss Gonzalez is our parent rep, so she's a great resource. This is her phone number; it's her Google telephone number. So, uh, if you have any questions pertaining to parents, you can you can reach out to the school, or you, again, you can reach out to Miss Gonzalez. Uh, we are, we've been doing this for two years now. Uh, I, as a principal, have been doing this for about eight years, but we also provide uh, what we call parent university. And uh, this year we're going to start right away in September, but we are going to offer classes to our parents, tutorials, uh, workshops, just uh, we call it parent university, to empower you. You're going to middle school um, with your children and there's a lot of things that are different than elementary. So we're going to be providing trainings and classes, uh, a Zoom 411, so a Zoom informational one. How do, how do you learn about Zoom? You were able to log in here, but there's a lot of features and we need to learn that so we can support our children. Uh, accessing the parent portal, we want to walk you through and train you so that you, have, you know how to operate and access the parent portal. That is a very powerful tool for all our parents. Um, that you understand Schoology so you can support our children. Every Wednesday, uh, Mr. Juarez, our librarian, um, we have a standing um, a parent uh, community building group where we, we meet with our parents and it's using restorative justice practices. Uh, we will do be doing monthly instructional support I mentioned that every Friday we're going to have uh, um, uh, meetings with the principal, with myself and my team. Uh, uh, we don't know the times that we're working on that, but we're going to be accessible to you in the spring. It was every Friday. Every Friday at 1 o'clock, we all logged on, and we were able to uh, share some stories. We were able to provide resources, and more importantly, we were able to provide support to our parents. So that will continue to there will be, there is a lot of opportunities for you to be a part of this community. And again, this, uh, my philosophy is the school is always the center of the community. It is your school. It belongs to you. And you should, uh, uh, you should always feel comfortable. In Spanish, we say con confianza, coming to the campus, 
calling and asking and, and getting the, uh, the questions you may have answered. Uh, uh, again, the, we talked about the parent portal. We'll, we'll be giving you trainings. If you need trainings, you can use the yellow, this this one that's here, just to say, hey, I need help with, uh, when you go on there, you'll have, you'll fill it out. It's very easy to fill out, but whatever help you need, you can, because uh, we're going to provide classes, but maybe you need more one-to-one. -one. You need somebody to actually call you and walk you through the steps. So we want to make sure that we provide that menu, that you have an opportunity to, to be in classes. But if you need one-to-one -one, uh, assistance, that you can also get that. But remember, to be able to access the parent portal, you need an email account. So if you don't have one, um, you should, uh, you, I encourage you to establish one. Um, all our students, they're so, when it comes to technology, they're so smart. I bet that if you asked any of your sixth graders, hey, help me get an email account, they'll know exactly how to do that. Uh, but if you need any help with an email account, please feel free to communicate with us and we'll, we'll reach out to you and walk you through. Know that we're gonna do classes, but we're also more than willing to engage one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to help you out. I'm gonna turn it over to our amazing uh, coordinator, Ms. Vega, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about our, our uh, more parent involvement and our parent councils. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to JNLA. Uh, I'm excited to be able to uh, to share with you some of the uh, activities that you can participate in at our school as parents. So we, aside from all the other, from the, from the workshops that we will provide in Parent University, uh, we have two councils that you can be a part of. Uh, the first one, School Site Council, which is in the yellow. Uh, school Site Council is a committee or a council that comes together and we look at uh, how we will spend uh, Title I federal funds. Uh, we tend to meet about once a month, um, and then in February, March, we'll tend to meet about three times in that month, just because we need to uh, finalize the budget and then send it over to, uh, to the district. Um, and then our second committee or, that we have is our ELAC committee, and the ELAC committee focuses on our English language learners. Uh, and as a committee, again, you meet also once a month. Uh, and within that committee, we come together, we look at data, and we decide, you decide as a committee, how, uh, what programs or what activities you would want uh, the school to participate in or uh, recommend how funds can be spent. Uh, to support uh, our English learners. Uh, just keep in mind that this year, because of, of what we're going through right now, our meetings will most likely be held uh, online. Um, and you'll get more information uh, once I get more information as to how these uh, committees need to be formed and voting and things like that. I will definitely be sharing information to all of you so that if this is something that you're interested in participating in, uh, this is available to you and we'll, uh, and we'll be working uh, together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vega. And now we have our uh, assistant principal, Ms. Wilson. Good afternoon, students and parents. Welcome to JNLA. Um, I am Ms. Wilson and as mentioned earlier, I'm the assistant principal who's over special education. Um, the clubs and activities that we have going on on our campus and we're transferring all of those into a virtual world so that we can continue all the fun stuff. And I'm also the assistant principal who will be uh, facilitating our new, newest, and I'm really excited about having this, our Black Parent Coalition. Um, and this came out uh, because of the current civil rights movement. I'm sure everyone is aware of all of the activity that's going on. Uh, right now to help promote and bring awareness to all of the, the uh, equity and access issues that, that are surrounding the black communities. Um, and this is something that we were going to work on. Actually, Mr. Alvarez wanted this to happen before the pandemic, not knowing that there was a pandemic coming and not even knowing that there was going to be a whole civil rights movement uh, within months of us having these conversations. We had parents, uh, black parents coming to us with some concerns 
um, we heard you and we saw you and we are putting together this coalition for you to make sure um, and, to, and to improve how our students are feeling on campus and how they're, um, how they're getting through their classes, um, how, they're being, how well they feel like they're being accepted, how they're socializing with other students and how, how included they feel. This is not a, a group or a club just for black parents. This is an all inclusive group. This is for anyone who feels like they are an ally to the black community and they want to help uplift our black students. Um, it is through the words of our parents. This isn't something for me to decide um, that this is what we're gonna do. This is for you, the parents to decide. So we have that tree there. You are the roots of this whole movement for our students. Your voices matter and it is what you say that's important to you that's gonna help drive this forward. So the entire LAUSD has some initiatives that they are driving uh, forward. Uh, Local District Central has our own initiatives behind Black Students Matter, which is an entire task force of stuff that we want the schools to do. But because JNLA always goes above and beyond, we always have to be the best at everything, we are adding components that no one else is doing. Um, and this is one of, one of them. Um, we don't care that other schools, whether they're doing it or not, we are going to do everything we possibly can to help our black students feel like they are loved and they are included and they have positive relationships on our campus. So if you are uh, interested in joining this black parent coalition, um, if you're black or otherwise, it doesn't matter because this work cannot get done without everyone's, without everyone's help. So if you're interested in joining us on this journey this year, here. Um, please let us know. We don't have anything set up quite yet because we're still figuring out, you know, just the logistics of things. But we will be, as soon as school is up and running and we're all comfortable and we have our routines, we're going to have this, this up and running ASAP. So you can contact the office. Um, you can let them know why you're calling. Um, you can even email. I believe our email addresses will be shared on our website. Uh, by any, like we say, by any means necessary, get in contact with us and we'll get, get you going. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. And uh, again, you can always use that, that yellow uh, uh, bit, we call it a bit.ly, but the yellow form, that link for uh, if you want to join the Black Parent Coalition, you can go ahead and use that and let us know I'm interested. Same thing with this uh, next slide here with the parent ambassadors. So uh, we all know that successful communities, when communities work together, it, it facilitates the academic growth of any school. And the school and the communities are always going to be related. As uh, I've always said, as the school goes, the community goes, as the community goes, the school goes. So one of the things we're gonna start this year, and this is an opportunity for, uh, and I hope parents, uh, quite a few parents, uh, sign up. It's a, a both a leadership opportunity and it's also an opportunity to be supported. So uh, if you want to be a parent ambassador, uh, which is uh, 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 would be the leadership component of this, we would, uh, you would sign up with us and then, um, and then we would, uh, those parent ambassadors will be meeting with myself and my team uh, twice a month so we can build your leadership but then we would assign you families to check in with. It's almost, in elementary, we call those room parents. And in elementary, a lot of teachers have a room parent who uh, helps communicate with the rest of the families, um, any, any of the needs that may be happening. It's the same idea uh, as a room parent, but it's for the middle school. So we want, we want parent leaders that are more than willing to engage, and then you get to be Again, uh, you'll work with us uh, meeting twice a month, but it's to be able to support families. And then we also have the, the, the pods, the families that want to be a part of this, just to have another line of communication. So for example, let's say Ms. Vega volunteers to be a parent ambassador, and um, she's gonna volunteer, we'll get her all the volunteer stuff, and, uh, and then we might assign her, these are the five families, that you will be checking in into just to make sure that they're supported, 
So let's say uh, Ms. Vega's checking in with a family and a family says, oh, Ms. Vega, you know what? My, the internet's not working or the device is not working. That parent ambassador immediately can call, uh, can call us and let us know we have a family that needs X, Y, and Z and we're able to respond. So that's what the parent ambassador process is going to be. And it's, um, again, it's to strengthen the, the supports and to establish community as well. So uh, I encourage all our parents who have uh, the time and are able to and want to be a part of this uh, to uh, sign up and let us know. And um, as we get the school year started, we're going to have a campaign around this to sign people up. So you'll have an opportunity. Again, I, I, we're giving you just a smidget, just a little a taste of all the opportunities as a, uh, that you have as a parent. The, the parent university classes are going to be on Saturdays, just so you know. Again, so that way you have access to, I know a lot of us work, but we'll do it on Saturdays. And a lot of these trainings, some of them will be in the evening, some of them will be on a Saturday, some will be in the morning. Again, it's, it's using the menu um, concept to be able to support all our parents. And we're gonna get into some other important information here. So this is very important. If you have a, get your pencils out, make sure you write these down. This is all important for our sixth grade families. So we are going to be distributing um, uh, backpacks to all our, all our students. And so uh, I have a team right now that's working in the auditorium putting together these backpacks. In these backpacks, your children will get their language arts textbooks and their mathematics textbooks. The rest of the textbooks will be able, now the textbooks are also available online, but I think that it's also important for our boys and girls to have the hard copy and something tangible where they can actually look through it um, and to have that at home. So uh, we're going to give out the language arts and math textbooks and some of the consumables and practice books. In those backpacks, we're also putting uh, spiral bound notebooks, we're putting pencils, we're putting index cards, we're put every, every boy and girl is gonna get uh, headphones like the ones I have, um, not, uh, not uh, AirPods, but just you know nice little uh, earphones that they can use to plug in. Again, knowing that sometimes our environment, our classroom, if we have little, if we have brothers and sisters, if there's a baby in the house, that sometimes there's gonna be natural noise that comes from that, but if we're able to connect with headphones, that goes a long way. So sixth grade, if your last name starts with A through L and your counselor is Ms. Fuentes, then your distribution date is uh, this Friday, August 7th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So between the hours of 9 and 3, 3 p.m., we want you to come to the campus, but not, this is very important, not to the front of the school. Because if you've noticed, the front of our school is where we do the food distribution. We've been a grab and go uh, food distribution site since the very beginning. So we wanna make sure because of the pandemic, because of COVID, we wanna make sure that we, we, we're not bringing a lot of people together and we can't physically distance. So to, we're going to distribute all these from our lunch area. And the way you access our lunch area is you go one block south to 27th Street. It's a, there's a, a, the 27th ends and it ends at our basketball court. The gates will be open, you'll walk in, you'll go to the left, and we're gonna have a system there for you where you just go straight to a table uh, your, your backpacks will be labeled. You pick up the la the backpack, and then you and then you go. So it should be no more than it'll be a quick in and out, right? So to keep you safe, to keep our staff safe, and also to ensure that uh, we're being as efficient as possible. At that distribution, if you have, if you need an iPad, if you use that form, the iPad will be there ready for you to go to, uh, and then. Um, so we wanna make sure that this is a, a one-stop resource for you. Again, this Friday, August 7th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If your last name is A through L, that's when you wanna show up. Monday, August 10th, if your last name is Martinez through Zuniga, then you wanna come on Monday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and show up for that. We're also going to have a makeup date if, if 
Friday doesn't work for you, if Monday doesn't work for you, then you can come on Saturday, August 15th at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and pick it up then, right? And if you have a situation that's very unique to you and you need additional support, again, just call the school and let us know. So you're going to, uh, your, your, your children are all gonna get backpacks with instructional materials, they're gonna get pencils, they're gonna get notebooks, erasers, um, uh, very, you know, some basic school supplies to help them at home with uh, uh, remote learning. And if you need an iPad, uh, if you need a hotspot, please use that, uh, that Google form, that survey, so that we have that ready for you. Um, you have that ready for you uh, to go on Friday and, uh, uh, and Monday. Now, on t uh, uh, aside from that, too, the school also mailed out to all our sixth grade families, we, we mailed out a packet with forms for you to fill out. You can, you can drop those off here at the school, like uh, those of you that already have it, the directions are the first page. Once you fill everything out, you can drop it off here. There's a box in front of the office that you can drop off from 12 to four o'clock. Uh, and I, I stress after 12, uh, from 12 to four o'clock, after the, the food distribution is over. Or you can bring it at the time that you come for that distribution. You can drop it off to, <clears throat> excuse me, you can drop it off that, that, that day too. We're trying to be efficient and we don't over, want to overwhelm you. And we certainly don't want you visiting the school more than you should because we are again in the middle of this pandemic and we should be at home as much as possible. So um, that's distribution of materials uh, happening this Friday next Monday for sixth grade, and then there's a makeup the following Saturday. If you have a unique situation where none of, the, none of those three dates work for you, just give us a call and we'll work something out. Next slide. Uh, again, this is our office team. We have Ms. Ms. Vargas. She's our amazing office manager. Uh, and so she uh, is here available for you. Some of you have already spoken to Ms. Quintero. She's been having and making individual appointments. Our office is open every day, 8 a.m. to 4.30. I'm sorry, it's not 4, it's 4.30. And um, the only thing, it is open, but I encourage you to make sure that you, uh, that you call ahead. Uh, and that's for your safety, to make sure that you, uh, the last thing you wanna do is just show up and then there's three, four people in the office. Because we're not gonna have that many people. We have to follow all the guidelines from the, uh, Center for Disease Control and the county health uh, offices, and we want to make sure that we we don't have um, we don't have overcrowded areas or spaces. So that uh, so please, if you have a question, please call ahead. Miss Quintero can set up an appointment for you, something that works for you, and then that way when you show up, it is just you. And then and then again, like anything else, like the doctor's office, like a lot of buildings, I've seen markets that way. If you, as a parent, if you're coming to campus, um, but you you you're showing symptoms, you have a fever, you you have a, you're you're sick, please 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 don't come to school. Uh, call us. That's for your own protection. That's for the protection of everybody. And here in a couple of weeks too, we will have uh, just like a lot of offices, we're gonna start um, uh, checking temperatures just to make sure that everybody is safe, right? And so again, we're accessible to you. And uh, we just have to remember that we are in the middle of a, a pandemic and we need to practice uh, those guidelines too. So again, our phone number to the office is 323-846-2200. And um, you know, we, uh, we call those walk-ups when you just show up. Uh, we're not saying you can't do that. We're saying, we're encouraging you to call ahead so that we can make some appointments for you so that way it's just uh it's just you and nobody else in the office uh here i'm going to turn it over back to our assistant principal Ms. casagran uh you know we always thought uh, one of our one of our uh, philosophies here one of our beliefs is this is our school our community and it's our responsibility and, and that means it's not just the school, it's just not the principal, it's not the parent, it's, it's all of us. We all have a responsibility. And I leave you with this quote here, unity is strength, 
when there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And I am confident. I feel I am fired up. I am very competitive. I know we're going to do a better job than any other neighborhood middle schools. We're going to do it together. And I know this is a situation that nobody wanted. And I know people are saying things are going to be different because it's remote. But we're going to fight all day long to make sure that our kids get the opportunities that they deserve and then we make this environment and this situation for them the best possible. And so, uh, again, I thank you. We're here for you to work with you. Thank you for taking the time today and uh, participating in this orientation with us. And I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Casagran, who's going to lead us. If there's any questions or any, any um, comments you may have, uh, we'll take care of that now. Ms. Casagran. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Alvarez. I'm fired up too after working so hard and knowing very well, we have a group of fabulous teachers who love collaborating, love learning. Parents, you are in good hands. Your children are in good hands. So I trust together we will be able to move mountains. So thank you again. So moving on to the next slide. So if we can move on to the next slide, Mr. Thank you. So the so information, the information is, here, is here, and I just, and I just want, want to, to emphasize, emphasize, and there is there an echo. Is an Somebody echo. has Somebody a, has a, a mic. mic, so if we can make sure that the sure mics are mic. still turned off. Thank you. So just wanted to share this information. We are recording this session. So parents, if you feel that there was some information that you might have missed and you want to go back and review this uh, presentation, it will be available on our website. Uh, I definitely want to urge you to please visit our website. We have gathered a collection of videos that our teachers, our support staff have created for you. We have videos in Spanish and in English, how to create a Gmail account. You will be needing your email account in order to access all of the platforms and to have a better communication with our staff. Uh, we will be providing these um, bit.ly's where you will be able to complete the surveys. So please keep posted on our website. At this time, I would like to open up um, if there's any questions please, you can do two things. We can use our reaction tab at the bottom of the screen. It's a little happy face with the plus sign. You can raise your hand and we will be more than happy to connect and listen to your questions if you have any questions that we have not been able to answer at this time. Okay, we must have done a very good job. We answered a lot of questions here. <laughs> okay, so remember, even if that question might come up an hour later, you are like, you have the opportunity to go back and see this presentation, or you also can email us if you have this information. So I believe we have a couple of questions on the chat box for Ms. Ana Cárdenas. I already have a parent portal, but I can't add my son since I don't have a pen. Thank you for bringing this up. Uh, Mr. Soto, myself, and Ms. Vega, and Ms. Guzman, we were talking about this, and we did receive information today from our local district central, so we will be providing this information as soon as possible. Our goal is to be able to relay this information using that parent form. We can provide this information. Uh, student ID as well as the PIN in order to access that account, okay? And let's see, we have another question from Ms. Esmeralda Hernandez. How will children that need extra support or have an IEP get help or be supported? Ms. Wilson, would you like to chime in? Sure, um, that would be me. So any student who's in LAUSD and has an IEP, uh, all of your information is in a database that all of LAUSD uses. All of that information gets transferred from school to school to school. As soon as you enroll into a school, um, all of that information goes, goes there. So you don't have to worry about that. We probably have all of your child's information um, from their IEP. As far as how our 
our school is set up to support those students. We're a full inclusion school. So that means that all of the students who have an IEP will be in all gen ed classes. And depending on the tier level support that they need, they will have a learning center, which is the one period a day where their RSP teacher will work with them either on specific strategies to have new math or English, or they will have them in there just to help them um, stay organized and kind of regroup because we know students who have an IEP sometimes it's just the the way they need to kind of get their thoughts together and get reorganized. Um, but um, something something that is possible We're having a we're having a little bit of connectivity issues. So at this point, um, Ms. Wilson is the point person, and if you would like extra information, we might be able to call our school, provide your telephone number, and Ms. Wilson will be more than happy to reach out to you and provide that extra support. So. I apologize for that connectivity. Okay, we also had one question from, I believe, it's kind of going in and out, Ms. Wilson. So the per parent will hopefully reach out to you, Ms. Wilson. Um, and again, we apologize for the bad connectivity at this point. Uh, we had one student who I believe asked, when will they be able to get information, or I might have missed this from Jasmine Castaneda, but when will I be able to get something to do classes on? Okay, so that is a very good information. Um, once we have all of the classes posted through Schoology, we will be able to access all of your courses through Schoology. Keep in mind that your teachers will be communicating with you, so please be patient. We, were, we are gonna be having our teachers reach out to you. We are gonna be making those personal phone calls to make sure that any of those questions might also be um, answered, okay? Okay, for Ms. Miranda Hernandez, will parents get a list of weekly announcements or will things be only posted on Schoology so we can help so we can help support them. As Mr. Alvarez mentioned um, prior, we will be sending connected messages, but most of the weekly information we have been using, not just Schoology, we've been using our social media from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even TikTok. We've been able to communicate with our parents and students because we understand that you are working and you need to have that information at the tip of your hands. So we are using multiple formats or platforms to communicate with you. Okay, hopefully I answered that question. Okay, and Yes, and parents, just keep in mind, the most important thing, Schoology might be new for you. The very first thing you need to do is register your email account through a parent portal in order to have access to Schoology. All of that information will be provided for you and we will be more than happy to train you in all of these platforms. So if we have any other questions, um, I'll be more than happy to take them. If not, Again, I highly encourage you to please visit our website. Um, I'm excited to be working with you. This is a whole different learning environment, but I think JNLA is very much ready to handle this and to be able to support you, your child, and their academic support. So at this time, if we have no more questions, uh, again, feel free to fill out those surveys, especially the survey for technology. And at this time, if there's no more questions, I would like to say thank you very much and enjoy your evening and we're looking forward to working with you in the near future. You can go ahead and log off. Thank you parents, thank you very much.